Only betray your trust. Quran chapter 8 verses 27. Likewise in the Hadith reported by Abu Humayt ibn Sa'ad as Sa'idi may Allah be pleased with him. He states that Prophet Muhammad may May peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Employ a man to collect zakat. When he returned to the Prophet with the collections, the man said, this, this is for you while the other wealth is a gift presented to me. So it is mine. So the messenger of Allah stood on the pulpit, praise Allah, as told him and then said, why does an official whom I send on a mission said, this is for you and this has been presented to me as a gift? Why did he not stay in the house of his father and mother to see whether gifts will be given to him? or not. By Allah, in whose hands is the life of Muhammad, if any one of you takes anything wrongfully, he will bring it on the day of resurrection, carry it on his neck, Muslim. From this, we can see that it is, the collect, it is the collective responsibility of all members of the society to ensure that they participate in the fight against corruption in the country. To portray this point, I will share another famous hadith of the Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Whoever amongst you encounter an abnormality should change it physically using his hands. If it is possible, let him change it orally with his mouth. If it is impossible, let him reject it in his mind. And that constitutes the weakest form of faith, Imam. Sahil Muslim. The EFCC, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, is one of the agencies set up to fight corruption and tackle challenges of corruption in Nigeria. The EFCC activities extend to all spheres of Nigeria, Nigerian life, by collaborating with all sections of the society, which include faith-based communities, a critical stakeholder, and with their appreciable following, it is hope the religious communities around the country will leverage the spiritual element in man to help in collective effort to curb the manners of corruption. In addition, an individual level we, all, we are all aware that everyone is responsible for what he or she does in his or her life, and therefore we must all make sure that we live up to our responsibility because eventually we will be called to account by Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the day of judgment. I therefore use this opportunity to admonish every one of us here to avoid all forms of corruption and for us to make efforts to support the government in achieving one of its priorities, which is to fight corruption. The government, through its anti-corruption agencies, cannot fight corruption alone. As such, we all must take responsibility in the fight against the evil of corruption in our society. 
to, to illustrate the importance and necessity of collective effort in the fight against corruption, I will give us one last hadith as follows. An Nu'man ibn Bashir narrated that Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, said. <laughs> they are calling it time, time. Assalamu alaikum. In conclusion, therefore, let, let us use that. <coughs> let us know that no one person or organization can do it alone. I therefore encourage everyone to come together to fight corruption and contribute towards making Nigeria a corrupt free society. I thank you once again for taking time to listen to me and pray that Allah accept our ibadah in this holy month of Ramadan and grant Nigeria peace, progress, and prosperity. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, the representative of uh, the acting chairman, EFCC, Malay Ibrahim Magu, for giving us a goodwill message. And uh, I believe uh, we wanted to allow the guest lecturer to go deep into the topic of today, and that's why. Uh, he hurriedly summarized uh, the already paper by the chairman EFCC. We thank you very much. Next, briefly, is uh, the chairman, board of directors, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, Malan Aliu Hayatu, for your goodwill message. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأزواجه وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ومقلديهم بإحسان إلى مدين أما بعد أيها الإخوة الإقعيدة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته يا رسالنسيس the representatives of the governors of Kaduna and Kaduna states, Masubarataba Sarakuna, Nedusi, the Nazazo, and then I will say all protocols observed. It was only a few minutes ago that I was being advised by Buhari, Buhara one, that I will be called upon to make some few remarks. We are here to hear a lecture on corruption. But corruption, we think of it generally in terms of Naira and Kobo, dollars, pounds, sterling, euro, stealing of all these, stashing them to serve our selfish interests. But there is an important facet about corruption which we shall all bear in mind. The acting chairman of EFCC in the address just delivered had made it clear 
that corruption is the standpoint of a mind which conflicts with the wider national or societal interest. Therefore, in our effort to fight corruption, what will be uppermost in our minds is to put in place, to put up suggestions which will bring Nigeria closer together, make it a better nation, a peaceful and prosperous nation. It is in this guise that I intend to take the privilege of my position to make remarks which generally would be very far away from what the guest speaker is going to say. I will appeal to us to make sure that in all our endeavors, we do not provide justification for animosity to creep into the national society, because that is the worst form of corruption that any of us can indulge in. It is with this in mind that I wish to offer advice on two plates. Don't blame me for going too far out of the way. I'm doing it deliberately because it is an issue that is current and relevant. We stand in Nigeria today where people are making all sorts of allegations. And these allegations reflect corruption in its worst, widest form. Two issues I wish to advise on is for us to be cautious in the kind of statements we make, because that is the statement, or that is the standpoint that will bring about corruption in Nigeria on a most destructive scale. The advice I wish to offer relates to the issues which are being advertised all over Nigeria today, that there is a crisis, tribal and religious. Now, when you think of corruption, as Mr. Mago says, you are thinking of statements, not the stealing of Naira and Kobo, but any statements we make capable of destroying Nigeria. Because our fight against corruption should be geared towards building a Nigerian nation that is strong, united, and prosperous. That is the greatest fight we can wage against corruption. I feel saddened to hear some of the allegations that are being made today that there is Fulani housemen who are trying to bring confusion in Nigeria, or there is a religious dimension in the conflict, in the terrorism that is going on. Now, they are asking me, I refuse to accept, I will go. <laughs> now, the point I want to make is, when you are thinking about Nigeria, please speak honestly, objectively. I read somewhere that the governor of Beno State, of Plateau State, at one time was saying that he did not believe Fulani were behind the tourism that was, that was about three years ago. But yet today, we are being told Fulani are behind it. Now, that is corruption of the worst form. The government of Beno State, so a spokesman, also said he did not believe Fulani were behind the crisis that is ongoing, and that was going at that time, three years ago. They all spoke on the platform of the BBC. So the records are there. Now, you cannot have greater corruption than for you to come now and say there is Fulani in this. Indeed, the American ambassador I read somewhere was saying that because he did not believe in this baldash about Fulani, that he would want an inquiry, deeper inquiry, to be undertaken to ascertain the actual sponsors of the corruption, the terrorist violence that was ongoing. That is about Fulani House. What of the religion? There was an attack in Bayelsa. Now, the person who attacked that church was wearing a turban. 
But when the security agents apprehended him, he was identified as Wisdom King, a Christian from Edo State. We know in Plato State, there was an attack on the church. Malam Aliyu Hayatu there, also talking about uh, the topic of the day, fighting corruption, Islamic perspective. He's also calling on all Nigerians to put heads together and contribute to the fight against corruption. I want to go and um, let you know the kind of dignitaries or area of dignitaries that we have here today on the crowd. Our Director General, Malam Yaqubo Ibn Muhammad, we shall deal, we should deal also with factors which are capable of bringing Nigeria to a nation. That is important. Thank you very much. Abtakbir, thank you very much, the Chairman Board of Directors, FRCN. Sorry, I have to be, uh, you know, keeping the time because goodwill message ordinarily is supposed to be two minutes because so that we we'll do justice to the guest lecturer and also the discussions of uh, the paper that is about to be presented. Um, next is the representative of the governor of Katsina State, Alaji Aminu Bello Masari, the Latin Katsina, being represented at this occasion by the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Information, Malan Musa Mahuta. The representative, Your Excellency, in this capacity. Thank you. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The chairman of this occasion. This is also the Emir Abdulze, Alaja Adam, Ali Ukiawa. Please permit me to stand on the existing protocol. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Ramadan, indeed, is a great period for us. For we were blessed to be born and brought up in the Islam and the religion of Islam. And we also believe that whatever we are going to we are doing, whatever we are going to do on earth, we are going to account for it. And Ramadan is one of the most blessed months that we have in the religion of Islam. First of all, I'm here to represent my executive governor of Katsina State, Alaja Amin Bella Masari, as the MC has rightly said. He wanted to be here personally, but I believe you will, uh, I, I want to tell you that he's together with us because due to some activities beyond his control that he has to be away from here. Rather, he asked me to be here with this gathering in order to, to uh, stay with you as well, ensure that all things are being done correctly. First, the issue of the, the sorry, the topic of the lecture, fighting corruption. As you all know, the topic of corruption has been a major problem in the Nigerian society, especially in the previous administration. But with the foresight and effort of Baba Buhari, he put this, the issue of fighting corruption 
as one of his first category in, his, in the agenda of his administration. As we all know, Nigeria, or internationally, Nigeria has been recognized as one of the countries in Africa that is seriously fighting the norm of corruption. And we can believe, we can also testify that the government is doing its best in doing so. Likewise, in my state, Katsuna State, being the home state of uh, the Baba Buhari, the president, our principal, Amin Bella Masari, is doing his best to ensure that all those corrupt people are uh, pushed out and all the avenues that they can be able to corrupt or loot the society that the public funds are being blocked. So I believe fighting corruption is a joint effort as our father has already said, our senior brother, senior colleague has already mentioned. So I believe we should must have put, uh, we must put all hands on deck to ensure that the imminence of corruption is put away in Nigeria. Thank you so much. Asalaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. That was a remark by the representative of the governor of Katsina State, Alaji Aminu Bello Masari. Uh, let me recognize the chairman board of trustees of the annual Ramadan lecture series, Mylan Inua Jabrin. You are welcome. Let me also welcome the Latin Zazo and former governor of Kaduna State, Alaji Dr. Mukhtar Ramalan Yaru, who is here. Uh, in the absence of the representative of the governor of Kaduna State in this uh, gathering today, let me call on the chairman of the occasion and the emir of Duse, Malan Nuhu Muhammad Sunusi, represented today by the district head of Kiawa and also one of the veterans in this field of ours, broadcasting, Malan Adamo Ali Ukiawa, to say the remarks by the chairman of this occasion and also to introduce to us the guest lecturer for today, Sheikh Dr. Bashir Ali Umar. Wakil me martaba bismillah. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على نبينا الكريم يا أكسلنس يا دي فوما قبنا في كنا ستيد لا تنززو رابرزنتيف أب دي قبنا في كنا ستيد رابرزنتيف أب دي أمير أب ززو دي دم مسني غاري هاد أوردي استابليشت a protocol and I want to stand on that protocol. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. The Emir of Duse, Al Haji Dr. Muhammad Sunusi, who has been a fan of this uh, lecture series and who has always been a supporter of the cause of Islam, small and big everywhere, had wished to be here himself but he sent his apologies and asked me to come and represent him. I am really delighted personally to be part of this because this is the first time uh, I am participating in this lecture series. I am happy because as a media practitioner for 39 years on and off, 
Today, I'm re-establishing my relationship with the media houses. I've seen quite a number of uh, colleagues. I'm happy with this. And I think we need to commend the trial of NTA, FRCN, and VON for consistently and persistently organizing this lecture series for the 13th time now. The best of good action is that which is persistent, even if it were small. We pray to Almighty Allah to continue to give them the strength to continue to organize this kind of uh, lecture series, which is highly educating and highly rewarding. We have today, as the guest speaker, Dr. Bashir Umar Aliyu, who I'm sure is well known to most of us as a pro prolific uh, Quranic uh, translator and uh, the chief imam of Al Furqan Mosque, who is a graduate of the Islamic University in Medina. And we all know those who know a little of the Islamic University, and I know a little bit of it through the speaker because I've known him over 20 years ago since he was. Uh, a student of that university. This is a university that, in my opinion, is probably uh, or probably offers the most intense and vast knowledge of any field. This is a university where, even as an undergraduate student, you don't have free lectures. You are in the class from 8 o'clock until closing time. You only have maybe a break, just like secondary school. You don't even move from one lecture hall to another. It is the lectures that meet you in the class to show you how intense the undergraduate studies there is. And for you to acquire a master's degree there, you need to spend four years. It's the only university that I know where you spend four years before you acquire a master's degree. And therefore, to get a PhD there, like Dr. Bashir got, you have to spend minimum of 12 years. And that is exactly what he did. Now, this is a university that has one of the largest library collections in the world, and the students have access to the Haram Library, which is also uh, one of the largest libraries in the world. And apart from being a student of the university, taking lectures from you, the well-educated lecturers there, you also frequently go to the Haram there and take lessons from the traditional ulama there. And therefore, a product of that university, in my opinion, is more vast in his knowledge than any product of any university in any field of knowledge. And added to the fact that Islamic education, Islamic knowledge in itself, is probably the, not probably, is certainly the most vast, the most intense, the widest sphere of knowledge that you can find. And therefore, an Islamic scholar who specializes even in one field, you will find him as vast in other fields of Islam as if those other fields are his own fields. For example, if you are a graduate of that university uh, in Quranic uh, sciences, you may be you will be so vast in hadith, in fiqh, and all other, sul fiqh, and all other aspects of Islam that anybody listening to you would think that that is your field of specialization. Unlike other fields of knowledge where if you are a metallurgist, for example, probably other than your field of area, you don't know as much in other fields. So what do we have today? is Dr. Bashir Umar, who is a graduate of that university, who is that kind of scholar, and who in addition is virtually in every other field. After acquiring his PhD from the Islamic University, he came and took a job with Bayer University uh, as a senior lecturer in the Department of Islamic Studies. And remember, he graduated in the field of Hadith Sciences 
But in addition, he also studied uh, Maliki Fiqh and Usul under traditional ulama and ulama in Medina also, like I mentioned in uh, the Haram. He's a senior lecturer now at, uh, in the Islamic Studies uh, and Sharia Department of Bayer University. And he has, a permanent, uh, he, he, uh, he has been a permanent commissioner in the Kano State Sharia Commission. And he was a consultant on Islamic finance to the financial system strategy of the Central Bank of Nigeria and sat as the special advisor to the CV and governor on non-interest banking from 2010 to 2014 during which the guidelines for the regulation and supervision of non-interest financial institutions in Nigeria were issued, and the first non-interest banks were licensed and CBN liquidity management experts. Uh, he currently sits on the Financial Regulation Advisory Council of Experts of National Insurance Commission. He represented the CBN in the Technical Committee of the Islamic Financial Services Board in Malaysia from 2010 to 2015, he was chairman of the, uh, of the Islamic Financial Services Board, uh, that is the chairman of his working group that developed the IFSB Standard 14 on Risk Management for Takaful Undertakings, and has also served as the chairman of the working group for another IFSB Standard on Takaful Undertakings. He is a member of the Sharia Committee of the International Islamic Liquidity Management Corporation in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. As well as, the, as well as the Council of Scholars of the International Sharia Research Academy of the Bank of Nagara in Malaysia. He has the merit subcommittee formed by the Emir of Kano, Muhammad Sunusi II, which produced the draft for the Muslim law of person, personal status for possible adoption by Kano State. He has authored several books, all of them published abroad, so today, uh, we have someone who is ably qualified to speak on the also aptly suited topic of fighting corruption in Nigeria from Islamic perspectives. And uh, I would not like to take any more time, but only to stress that corruption as we see it, we always see it at the national level, less at the state level, and probably don't very much care at the national level, but actually corruption starts from the home, from families, from our families. All these corrupt people are likely, are likely to have, to have learned to be corrupt right from the society, from the family. I mean, you don't learn, you don't, you don't, once you are well groomed from the family, you are not, you are not likely to be influenced from outside. Unfortunately, today, we live in a society where every parent wants his child to be excessively rich, not minded how they acquire the richness, to the extent that we even choose the profession that our kids should go for in school, and we ask them to go for professions, not those professions that will help them uh, help the society, when you have, when you have them help the society, but profession that will make them make money. So if they come out of the society and they see money coming across their table, why should they take it after we have taught them at home that they acquire education to make money? The first generation of Western educated were taught or were told to acquire education so that they can come and help build the society. Today we tell our kids to acquire education so that they can get wealthy, so that they can get money, not help the society. So why do we expect them when they get into a position of responsibility while there's money coming, and remember after school, whatever job is offered to them, they will not take it except there's money. They will not take a teaching job, they will not take uh, any job that the salary is not even important to them. What is important is, what can I get on that job? As long as the society right from home does not fight this, and as long as the com our communities do, do not stop recognizing and respecting people who are corrupt, I'm sorry to say the federal government alone cannot do it. It takes two to tango, they say. If the government is ready to fight corruption, we Nigerians have to also be ready to accept to submit ourselves to that fight. 
With this, I will welcome our speaker, Dr. Bashir Umar Aliyu, and I urge all of us to listen uh, attentively and even viewers at home to get glued to their television and if you uh, are listening to us on FRCN or VON, don't change the dial as they say. And I hope and pray that we'll be highly educated and we will be able to implement whatever we learn here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala. Thank you very much, Dammas Amin Duse, District Head of Kiawa, Malan Adamu Aliu Kiawa, representing the chairman of those occasion, the Emir of Duse. You have heard the citation of uh, the guest lecturer today, Sheikh Dr. Bashir Ali Umar of Bayer University, Kano, and Chief Imam of Al Furqan Jumaat Mosque in Kano. And um, let me recognize the former Executive Director of Engineering of NTA, who is here, and also the former Director of Administration of VON, or sorry, the Director of Administration of uh, Voice of Nigeria, who is also here. As we have heard, the topic for today is fighting corruption, the Islamic perspective. And it's going to be a presentation of both English and Hausa. And I believe, as we have heard from the chairman, the guest lecturer is the person who will do justice to this topic. All what we have been doing is just to touch the periphery of the topic of discussion today. And I believe after about 40 minutes, he will have 10 minutes to uh, summarize what he said in Hausa. Thereafter, we have another five or 10 minutes for the discussion on the paper who uh, Dr. Yaqub, Dr. Yahya Mujahid is going to be the discussant of this paper. Mr. Chairman, distinguished guests, let me invite a Sheikh Dr. Bashir Ali Umar of Bayer University, Kano, and the Chief Imam of Al Furqan Mosque in Kano to deliver the lecture for today. Ad Dr. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyati amalina man yahdihi allahu falamudilla lah wa man yudlil falahadiya lah wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man istanna bi sunnatihi wa ahtada bi hadihi ila yawmiddi amma ba'd uh, I'm very thankful to Allah wa ta'ala for giving me the chance to attend this 13th annual Ramadan lecture organized by the NTA, the FRCN, the VON. Sorry, uh, all protocols are duly observed, uh, but alhamdulillah, my salam covered, uh, uh, covers us all, and may Allah give us the barakah of the salams. Uh, it is indeed uh, a great pleasure to be here again. Uh, this is not my first time of attending this lecture. I was here, I think, two or three years ago with the Emir of Kano when he delivered the lecture. And earlier uh, on, I had also uh, been uh, a participant in this uh, annual gathering. And may Allah wa ta'ala put a lot of blessings in it. And may Allah reward the ones who started it as uh, uh, I will also join the uh, chorus in praying for them, for the ones who established it, 
as was done by the uh, former director. Uh, I'm also thankful to the organizers for inviting me to speak on this topic, which is very topical, that is fighting corruption, uh, the Islamic perspective. Uh, the issue of fighting corruption, we know, is a, is a global fight. Uh, it is uh, championed by multilateral organizations, and uh, a dedicated organization has been established, the Transparency International, that has been given worldwide recognition. Uh, and uh, we, as Muslims, uh, we need to go back to the teachings of our religion to see what is the relevance of this fight uh, to our beliefs and our practice, and what is the position of Islam regarding corruption and fighting it. So my talk is mostly going to be on fighting corruption, not on the details of the impact of corruption on society, because this is something that is uh, widely known. Even though I need to define what corruption is, uh, but I will not dwell on the impact of corruption on society, rather I will dwell on the, uh, the perspective of Islam in fighting corruption, because the topic is fighting corruption, not corruption itself. As we know, uh, Islam is the final religion of Allah. It is the religion that has been chosen by Allah and accepted by Allah for mankind. It is the final embodiment of what all the prophets of Allah alayhi salatu wassalam, have been calling and declaring to mankind throughout history. Allah the Most High said, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum ul-Islam deena. This day I have perfected for you your religion and quite uncompleted my favors unto you and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. He also said, in the deen in the Allah islam the only religion in the sight of Allah is Al-Islam. Now the fundamental objective of Islam is to bring about good and benefit for the whole of humanity and maximize it and to eradicate evil and harm and minimize it. That is the fundamental principle of Islam is jalbul masalihi wa takthiruha wa darul mafasidi wa taqliluha. As a result of this, Islam has set high standards of ethics, morals, values, and norms of behavior, as well as systems for regulating all human endeavors in all aspects of life on this planet, so that which will guarantee the attainment and fulfillment of this fundamental objective of Islam. Corruption is one of the evils that is scourging human life on earth. As such, its eradication and minimization falls under the fundamental objective of Islam. Corruption predates Islam. It has been documented to exist as early as in the Assyrian civilization. This is according to historical records. But according to the Quran, we know that when Allah decreed to, uh, to create a vicegerent on earth, Al Khalifa, the angels, they, they, they asked Allah wa ta'ala, they said, Ataja'alu fiha man yufsidu fiha wa yusfiku dima wa nahanu nusabbihu bihamdika wa nuqaddi sulak. Are you going to place therein the one who will spread corruption on it and spill blood, and spill blood uh, while we are the ones who are chanting your praise and glorifying you? And Allah said, I know what you do not know. Now many of the Mufassirun, they do cite that there were creations on earth that predated the children of Adam who spread corruption on earth. Now, now there is no reference to this clearly, uh, but we know that before Islam itself, before the coming of the Prophet wasallam, there was corruption because as we have seen instances of mention of the word regarding previous prophets of Allah Taala. But according to human history, the Assyrian civilization, which uh, existed in the year, in the 13th century before the, com the, Christ the common era, that is 1,300, about 700 years, uh, 1,300 1, years 
before the Christian era. Uh, in 1997, a group of Dutch archaeologists, they found near Raqqa, which is a city in, uh, in Syria, about 150 cuneiform inscriptions, that is, writings on walls, which indicate that the site contained an administrative center of the Assyrian civilization that dated 13th century before the Christian era. A special archive was found, perhaps from the equivalent of a modern day Ministry of, Fine of the Interior. This archive, it contained data about employees that were accepting bribes, including the names of senior officials and the name of an Assyrian princess. So they were having a record, a database of people that were engaged in administrative corruption. There is no wonder, therefore, that Islam has confronted this evil right from the early epoch of its history, which was during the time of the Prophet ﷺ himself. Now, the purpose of this my presentation is to present the position of Islam over this evil and how it defined it, identified it in all its ramifications, and dealt with it. The Encyclopedia of the Social Sciences defines corruption as the misuse of entrusted power for private benefit, which was quoted by one of the, in one of the goodwill messages. This is the definition of the Encyclopedia of Social Sciences. That is the misuse of entrusted power for private benefit. This is the definition that was adopted by the Source Book of Transparency International, where they regard corruption as involving behavior on the part of officials in the public sector, whether they are politicians or whether they are civil servants, in which they improperly and unlawfully enrich themselves or those close to them by the misuse of the power entrusted to them. Now, this definition limits corruption to political and administrative corruption, maybe because of its prevalence in modern society and its wide effect on other factors of life. In Islam, corruption is given a wider and more encompassing definition. The Arabic term for corruption is fasad. The meaning of fasad in the Arabic language is literally the same as corruption in English. To corrupt in the transitive sense is to change from good to bad in morals, manners, or actions. It is the same in Arabic, it is also the same in English. In Arabic, to do fasad is to change a thing that is originally good by removing the goodness from it, or to adopt or commit a thing that is originally bad and has no good in it. So to find something that is good and remove the goodness that is in it, or to commit or do something that is inherently bad and evil which, in which there is no good, this is all regarded as fasad in Arabic language. The commentators of the Quran regard fasad as changing the benefit of a beneficent thing to harm, either by the agency of the thing itself or by another agency, or to adopt or commit something that is intrinsically harmful. This term has been used in several places in the Quran, and it is usually used in this generic sense. Even though in one verse some specific aspects of fasad we are mentioned as examples of this general meaning. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَإِذَا تَوَلَّى سَعَى فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُفْسِدَ فِيهَا وَيُهُلِكَ الْحَرْفَ وَالنَّسَرَ And when it is said to the... وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ اتَّقِ اللَّهَ أَخَذَتُ... وَإِذَا تَوَلَّى And when he turns back... Afwan. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُون spread corruption on earth, they say we are only making good. Now this is the, uh, this is the, uh, one, uh, this is the Quran describing one of the evil qualities of the munafiq and the hypocrites. This is facade in the generic sense, and it was not specific, because whatever they were asked not to do, they were being asked not to do acts of evil in its general sense, but they regard that and gave it the name of goodness. And Allah also mentions specific aspects of fasad when he said when he turns away his effort in the land is to make corruption in it and to destroy crops and cattle and Allah likes not corruption. 
destruction of uh, destruction of wealth, destruction of crops, destruction of livestock has been described as corruption by Allah wa Ta'ala. And also Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala said, وَالَّذِينَ يُمَسِّكُونَ بِالْكِتَابِ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ إِنَّا لَا نُذِئُ أَجْرَ الْمُسْلِحِينَ And as to those who hold fast to the book of Allah and perform prayers, certainly we shall never put to vain the reward of those who do good. The opposite, the opposite of this is facade, is not holding to the book of Allah and not performing prayer. This is facade. Now based on this generic meaning, some of the specific examples mentioned uh, from, by the commentators of the Quran cite some examples of corruption as follows. Changing beneficent things to harmful things, like the selling of defective items, especially foodstuff, annihilating useful things, like the destruction of lives, property, plants, and animals, corrupting systems like tyranny and creation of social and political chaos and disorder, corrupting actions like abandoning education or spreading evil ways, ideas, and practices, and beautifying the rejection of Iman and hatred of pious and imbibing the hatred of pious and sincere people among people. These are all examples of corruption mentioned by the commentators of the Quran. All these are forms of corruption and they all fall under the generic definition. Now, based on these, uh, you can identify categories and dimensions of corruption from the Islamic perspective. The first one is the political corruption. Political corruption denotes the illegal acquisition of power and using it for evil and illegitimate purposes. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said regarding political power and public office and responsibility, Innaha amana wa innaha yawm al qiyamati khizun wa nadama illa man akhadaha bi haqqiha wa adda alladhi alayhi. It is, uh, that is political power, it is a trust, but on the day of judgment, it will be a cause of shame and regret. Except for those except for the one who assumes it right justifiably and discharging, discharges its obligations dutifully. This is a hadith in Muslim. This prophetic hadith condemns the one who assumes public office or political power illegitimately, illegitimately and regards that as a form of political corruption. This includes electoral fraud, the violent overthrow of just regimes, and violent overthrow of just rulers, as in most cases of military coups and quasi-revolutions. It also includes bribing one's way to power or public office or acquiring it through nepotism. This last has been explicitly mentioned in the saying of Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, where he was reported to have said, whoever is in a position of public trust over the Muslims and then appoints a person based on love or affection or kinship between them, then he has indeed betrayed the trust of Allah, his messenger, and the Muslim community. Now, how are, how are our appointments? If you weigh this with what Sayyidina Umar has said. That is, appointments should just be based on qualification and ability, but not on any other subjective consideration. The one who does not do that he betrays the trust of Allah, the trust of the Prophet وسلم, and the trust of the generality of the Muslims. The one who does this falls under what Allah has warned. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la takhunu Allah wa rasoola wa takhunu amanatikum wa antum ta'lamu wa alamu anna ma amwalukum wa auladukum fitna wa anna Allah indahu ajrun azim. O you who believe, do not be disloyal to Allah and his messenger and betray your trust while you know and know that your wealth and your children are a trial for you, and with Allah alone is immense reward. The second category of political corruption mentioned in the hadith is the lack of faithful discharge of the obligations of public office. This includes the misuse of office and position for spreading mischief or for personal benefit. And this last falls under aspects of administrative corruption. The second is administrative corruption, whose meaning is what we said, that is, making use of public office for personal benefit or acquiring office 
through illegitimate means. The third type of corruption is economic corruption. The example is the, is the corruption of the people of Madian, who used not to fulfill the measure and weight and deprive people of their due rights. Uh, and this is why in almost all places where Allah mentioned uh, the prophet Shu'aib and his call to his people Madian, the mention of fasad is there. وَلَا تَعْثَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُفْسِدِينَ وَلَا تَعْثَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُفْسِدِينَ Do not spread mischief and corruption on earth. Because what they were doing is the epitome of mischief which is depriving people of their due financial and economic rights because they were in a position of, uh, of advantage. They were in a, in a position of advantage over their counterparties, what they call the asymmetry of parties, either based on information or based on control which you have, which the, uh, or the counterparty does not have. What were they doing? They were wrongfully weighing, uh, they were adjusting the measure so that they will measure for somebody an amount less than the real amount. Just like the petrol station, they, they, they tamper with the meter. You know, the ordinary ones, the Masakin Mufsidun, because the Mufsidun, they are in grades. The Masakin Mufsidun, they will just hit the pan so that when they are weighing for you, it will not be full, it will be reduced, it, it will, the measure will not be full. But the, the real serious Mufsidun, they are the ones who are always uh, cheating thousands every day. Whenever you go into the petrol station and they have altered the meter, they will just, maybe what they will take from you may just be uh, five naira, three naira, but you multiply that by thousands and you see how much they are getting. And all that is hellfire they are, they are squandering into their, into their stomachs. This is economic corruption. And this was the, the type of corruption that the Prophet wasallam himself used to check. He used to go into the market. And one time he went into the market and he saw somebody selling wheat. And he put his hand underneath and it was wet. He said, ما هذا يا صاحب الطعام? What is this, O oh, you who is selling wheat? He said, يا رسول الله أصابت السماء. There was rainfall and it's, uh, it fell on it. He said, هلا وضعته فوق كي يراه الناس من غش فليس مني. Why didn't you put it on top so that people will see? Whoever, is, uh, whoever deceives and hoodwinks others, he is not from me. He is not of me. So this is checking economic corruption by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself. This is an aspect of corruption. There is also social corruption, and under this falls the corruption of morals and chastity, like the plastics of the people of Lut alaihi salam. They were also described as mufsidun. They were also described as mufsidun. Qala Rabbi najini min al qawm al mufsidin. He said, O oh Allah, save me from the people of corruption. This was the prayer of Lut alayhi salam in Surah Al-Ankabut. This is a corruption of morals. What was their corruption? Men were seeking their desires from fellow men and women also the same. You know, just like now, the legalization of same-sex marriage. That is albul haqaiq, uh, uh, putting reality upside down. Now this kind of social corruption, it pervades, it, it pervades the whole community. It can even reach up to, the, up to children, and you can see it when it becomes destroyed in society, when the moral fiber of the society becomes destroyed, becomes cut. Just imagine a primary school where the headmaster is busy, he has to gather some money that he has to give to the inspector so that he will, be, he will remain in his position. And then he creates, he creates a, a way of raising money. He said every student must make ID, new ID cards every year. And the new ID cards, you are going to take, uh, the, the one who will take, the photographer is going to be from the school. You wouldn't bring a picture. Come and get slapped in the school. And they, they agree with the photographer. Per student is 200. 
So what does the principal say? He said, everybody must bring 500 for the ID card. And he has agreed with the photographer 200, 300 is his own. And he tells the class teacher, go and tell your students, everybody must bring 500. And the class teacher will put 100 on him. He said, you see, the school says 600. When he goes to tell his, when he goes to tell his mom 600, his mom will come and tell the husband, so this year they have said it's no longer, this year what they are saying is no longer 500, it's 1,000. She takes 1,000 from him, 400 is her own, she gives him 600 to go. And maybe if it becomes worse, the student before telling his mother that we are supposed to pay 600, he will say it's 700. So that the 100 will be his own, he will take 600 to school. This is how it becomes pervasive. That is social corruption. Then there is also environmental corruption, which is the one mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, that is the destruction of the ecosystem, the destruction of the climate, polluting the climate, enhancing desertification, blocking the waterway of people, which will lead to uh, flooding and death of life and destruction of property. This is all environmental corruption, which has all reference to it, has all come in Islam, and it has been fought tooth and nail. So what is the Islamic approach to combating corruption? The first and foremost is that to combat corruption, you have to fight, there has to be corruption fighters. That was why Allah Taala sent messengers. He sent messengers to correct the evil and corrupt ways of people. So there has to be fighters. And the first and foremost is the personal integrity of the ones who are fighting corruption. This is the first and foremost thing. And that is why the Prophet وسلم, is commanded in more, in, in more than one verse to say, Wa ana awwalul muslimin. I am the first of those who submit. I will, not tell to you, I will not tell you to submit to Allah while I don't submit to Allah. He is the first to submit. And this is why in the beginning of the Quran, when the Quran discussed the, com the community, that Islam will live forever, engaging with them, the Bani Israel, is Allah Taala mentioned a proper a quality of theirs which we must avoid if we want to prosper. He said, "Ata'muruna nasa bil birri wa tansauna anfusakum wa antum tatluna al kitaba afala ta'akilun." Do you command people with goodness and you forget yourselves and you are reciting the book of Allah? Why do you not? Why do you not use your intellect? And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in hadith in the hadith of Usama he reminded us of the uh, 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 somebody in hellfire who will have his intestines and his stomach everything out and he will be dragging them like a donkey drags uh, the wheel that is uh, praising sugar cane. And the people of hellfire will come and surround him. And they will identify him. They say, ah, so, so, and so. They will call him by his name. Were are you not the one who was commanding us with good and forbidding us from evil? He said, yes, I used to do that. But I used to, say, to tell you, do good, while I never did it. And I used to tell you, don't do bad. And that was what I was doing. So even the people of hellfire, they are making him an object of uh, surprise. They are surprised to find him there. So the most important thing is the personal integrity of the one who is fighting corruption. That is, you have to be upright yourself. And for this integrity, all actions in Islam have been tied to the belief system. I mean, integrity is not an intellectual habit. I mean, it's not like the philosophy of Kant where he talks about integrity and morality and so on and you regard it from an intellectual perspective. No, under Islam it is tied to belief. The essential belief is belief in Allah and belief in the last day, that you are going to be asked before Allah wa ta'ala. That is why Allah wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ يُؤَذُ بِهِ مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ ذَلِكَ يُؤَذُ بِهِ مَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ ذَلِكُمْ يُؤَذُ بِهِ مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ إِن كُنتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ and the Prophet used to say, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir. Whoever believes in Allah on the last day. The question of the issue of the last day is central to this. The one who does not have this belief in the afterlife, then he is the one who will only have morality if it is to his own self-interest. 
the one who denies the day of judgment what did allah say about him bal yuridu al insan li bal yuridu al insan li yafjura amama human the, uh, uh, the man who denies al akhira he wants to do al fujur ahead of him he wants to make the door the way open for him to, to commit all sorts of misdemeanors so that is why allah tabaraka wa ta'ala when talking about riba he said wattaqu yawman turja'una fihi ila allah thumma tuwaffa kullu nafsin ma kasabat wa hum la yuzlamun an fiya adi when you will be returned back to allah and then you will be rewarded you will be given full reward for what you have uh, for what you have done wa man ya'mal mithqala dharratin khayran yara فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يرى ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يرى ان عمر رضي الله عنه يوسف سي الكيس من دان نفسه the one who has who is clever is the one who puts himself under accountability so this feeling of accountability is essential and closely tied to this regarding personal integrity is the realization that when in in cases of corruption there are three things that are a reward or a, 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 there are three things that follow the first and foremost is the evil al ithm it's an act of ma'siyah an act of disobedience an act, a, a, and an act of disobedience is evil itself it is a cause of hatred in the sight of allah a cause of hatred in the sight of angels of allah this a cause of hatred in the hearts of people themselves that's why you find somebody spending a lot he wants to be loved by people but because of the evil act that he is doing people will say wallahi ba mai they will not because the hatred has been there because of what he has done so this uh, uh, and part of the negative impact of al ithm al ma'siya is that it deprives you of the baraka of wealth and it shows on the face it, darkness shows as ibn abbas has said and it gives constriction in the heart no matter how much you surround yourself with material things you are not happy and the only happiness will come when you repent to allah now this is uh, this is a reality the third, the second thing is that there is a punishment for it if it is not if it is not a had then there is ta'zir as we shall see and the third and foremost is that there is restitution you have to pay you have to pay what you squander if it is a gift which you to, which you took and just uh, unjustifiably it will be snatched look a simple thing like uh, money that was supposed to be transported from iraq to medina and saad ibn abi waqas he gave it to a son of umar ibn al khattab to transport the money with himself for him uh, to, 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 uh, he gave him the money and he asked him okay instead of carrying the money buy some merchandise when you reach uh, medina sell it give the money to amir al mu'minin and the profit is yours and when he went he did exactly that this was public funds he took the money bought merchandise brought it to medina sold it and then he came to umar his father he said oh amir al mu'minin this is your money and this is my profit so the, so say now umar he said bring the profit both the capital and the profit is ours we are you are not the only one in the entourage why did he choose you to give you it is because you are the son of amirul mu'minin you are not entitled to it so sad ibn abi waqa so some of the sahaba who were there it is in muwatta he said ya amirul mu'minin make it qirab uh, make it qirab that is make it uh, make it a part a joint partnership that is divide the profit between the muslims and himself and he accepted he said okay since you took the uh, the work of buying and selling take a take a portion but the, the other portion will go to uh, uh, the baitul mal you see the, uh, the if it was improperly acquired you would have paid compensation so these three things are aspects that will uh, uh, that will put uh personal integrity on individuals in the society and it gives them the right to fight corruption there are also institutions for fighting corruption that have been established in islam 
Uh, the first and foremost institution is the Sharia itself, the law. The rule of law that democratic societies have been talking about is something which they never knew till after the French Revolution and the establishment of the first modern state. But in feudal Europe and in the dark ages of Europe, they never knew the rule of law. The king was the law. The prince was the law. But in Islam, since before, since before uh, how many years? Over a thousand years before, the, uh, before they knew the concept of the rule of law, the rule of law has been there firmly entrenched in Islam. Everybody was subject, of the, was subject to the law. The ruler, the ruled, the noble, the peasants, men and women, they were all subjects of the law. And the ruler himself could be, could be brought before the law. And you can take a case against the ruler himself. The ruler was not the law. He was subject to the law. Now this made it possible to check crimes through had there are specific punishments that have been mentioned by the Sharia capital punishment. And then any other, any other crime, especially crimes against the society. Because if you look at uh, the book of Ta'azir, the chapters on Ta'azir, most uh, these punishments that are not specified, which are subject to the independent judgment of the Qadi, most of them, they are crimes against the society, to protect the society, to check excesses against the society. And all, a treatment of all cases of corruption, they fall under this category. So this is a strong institution in the Sharia. That is, if there is no had, then there is ta'zir. You know, some people, we are saying during the Sharia debate that how can you cut the hand of a thief for stealing a cow? And yet, you let a government official who stole the budget of a whole local government and you let him go scot-free. Where is the justice in this? This ordinary person in the local government for stealing a cow, you cut his hand. And this, uh, 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 this one who steals with his bureau, he stole the whole budget of the local government and he goes scot-free. But it's not the case. Because ta'zir can exceed, especially in the madhab of Malik, ta'zir can exceed the limit of the prescribed punishment. Ta'zir can even be with death. You can do, uh, uh, the, the judge, if he sees the severity of the crime, and if he sees that it needs an action that will prevent, that will set an example and prevent others from doing it, he can go to the farthest of limit which is the taking of life. This is the position of Malik. So you see such a person, it depends on the judgment of the Qadi. He can say, no, I'm not taking your hands off. I'm taking your life. Not just the hand, but the whole life, depending on the severity of the claim, of the crime. So uh, the second institution is the institution of the ulama and the imams. The ulama, they give legitimacy to the uh, public institutions, the ruler and the public servants. They give legitimacy to them. That is why they are among the Ahlul Halli wal Aqd. They have to do the bay'ah for the ruler to be recognized as the ruler. They also give fatwa. They also teach and they give the, the sermons. And among the, the things that the efficacy of this institution was seen in their ability to check the excesses of rulers. Like Sultan al-Ulama is Ibn Abdis Salam. When the Mamalik uh, uh, Sultan of Egypt, he entered into a disfavorable, uh, a disfavorable covenant with the, uh, with the crusading armies of the Franks of Europe by seceding some islands that we are part of the Islamic homeland to them. And he did that for his own personal interest. If the Dean bin Abdul Salam, he said, you will either cancel that treaty 
and return back those islands or I will stop praying for you on the pulpit. He said he will stop praying for him on the pulpit because the prayer on the pulpit it is the prayer uh, that the Amir al-Mu'minin he was always after and it was the practice Allahumma uh, uh, Allahumma uh, wafiq imamana lima tuhib wa tarda Allahumma ansur imamana imam al-Muslimin wa ayyidhu bita ayyidik all those dua which they do on Friday and during Eid he said I will stop doing that dua because that dua is, the, is a source of legitimacy to the ruler and he immediately returned it and also the practice of the ulama not attending the janaza of someone who is known for corruption because it is a principle of fiqh that someone who is a clear facet that people of uh, eminent standing in society ulama and righteous people should not attend his janaza he should be left with ordinary street people to do the janaza for him this is a kind of thing that used to check the corruption of people in corruption so uh, I will just switch to Hausa. Uh, uh, sorry, because I was said I am out of time. But just before switching to Hausa, let me briefly say, mention the remaining institutions, even if it is briefly, is the institution of Hizba, which is checking uh, the good that is not done publicly. Clearly, people publicly, they, uh, they neglect an, a good action. So the Hizba, they check it. Or they make a bad action publicly, so the Hizba checks it. Uh, then there is the Wali al Wali al-Mawali, the institution of Wali, which is still in, the, in most of the Emirates of, uh, of northern Nigeria. The institution of the Wali, it is the institution whereby the ruler himself, the ruler himself, he's taken to court. That is, it's the court of the ruler and the nobles and the top government officials. It's a kind of an, of an ombudsman in the society. Walil Madalim. Al Mawardi talked extensively about it and he mentioned about 10 functions of that office. It is through that that even the, pro the property that is wrongfully confiscated by rulers, it is snatched away from them and returned to its uh, rightful owners. Or if the ruler he wrongly destroys the property of an innocent citizen, the Walil Madalim, he will force him to pay and rebuild. This, is the, this institution was there even, by, uh, uh, even in uh, the books of the jihad scholars, they mention it, and that's why we have Wali uh, in, uh, in most of our emirates. There is also the institution of open challenge of wrong practices and wrong policies, like the woman did to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anha, and also holding public officers accountable. Holding public officers accountable, that is asking them to declare their wealth at the point of assumption of office and then to declare their wealth and assets at the, point, at the point of being relieved of their post. And if through calculation any amount is found to be wrongly acquired, it will be snatched and put in the public treasury. Now, uh, sorry, to Enzo Nkoma, how are you Hakuri? Mumpati Ma'anar Barna Watu yawanci muna fassara irin wannan abin da ake magana akan sa akan ce cin hanci da rashawa cin hanci da rashawa nau'i ne na barna amma barnar da ake nufi shine dukkan wani abu wanda yake kyakkyawa a mai da shi mummuna ko kuma a je a aikata wani abu wanda yake dama can mummuna ne babu wani kyau a cikin sa to tunda manufar addinin musulunci shine tabbatar da gyara da inga da yawaita shi da kawar da barna da karanta ta ya nuna kan cewa yaki da barna cikin harkokin rayuwa musamman ta gwamnati abu ne wanda yake ya dace da manufar addinin musulunci maqsudi ba shine mai magana akan barnar da abin da take kawowa ba duk da a cikin bayani na na bayyana kan cewa nau'in barna iri iri ne akwai barna siyasa shine a tsan mulki ba ta hanyar da ta dace da shari'a ba ba ta hanyar da ta dace da haki ba kuma ai amfani da mulkin domin cin ba ta hanyar da Allah ba ta hanyar da shari'a ta ajiye ba Akwai barna ta fuskar tattalin arziki shine cutan mutane wajen mu'amalar kasuwanci akwai cuta ta fuskar zamantakewa shine gurba ta dabi'u da gurba ta al'adu kamar auren maza da maza da auren mata da mata da kuma abubuwa wadanda suke gurba ta dabi'a sannan akwai kuma barna ta fuskar ta fuskar halittar Allah yanayin halittar Allah 
ba ta halitta shi ma yana daga cikin barna to shari'a ta ta fitar da hanyoyi na kawar da barna wanda yake babban abu a ciki shine shi mai yaki da barna ya zamanto ya tsarkake kansa ya zamanto kan cewa ba wanda zai je yana wa'azi bane alhali kuma abin da yake wa'azi ga barin sa shi kuma abin da yake aikatawa kenan sannan akwai tsari da shari'a ta zo da addinin musulunci ya zo da shi wanda zai hana barna babban tsari a cikin wannan shine sal mikawiya ga shari'a sannan tsarin hisba da tsarin wali wali almabali to a karshe da hausa zan karanta mana wadansu hadisai na manzon Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wadanda suke su ne asasi na shari'an musulunci domin yaki da barna hadisun farko hadisi ne mashhuri hadisun Abdullahi dan Umar cewa kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi kowanne daga cikin ku makiyayi ne kuma kowa za a tambaye shi akan wato amana da Allah ya bashi takiyo ya kawo musalin mutum cewa shi makiyayi ne akan gidansa a mace makiyayi ya ce akan gidan mujinta da dukiyar sa bawa mai wato mai muji hidima makiyayi ne akan dukiyar shugaban sa yace kowa ma dai saboda haka kowa kana da amana kuma za a tambaye ka akan wannan amana to kun ga mas'uliya kenan yaushe za a yi tambayar a gaban Allah kamar yadda manzon Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yace kafofin bawa ba za su gushe ba a gaban Allah sai an tambaye shi abubuwa guda hudu akan dukiyar sa akan ilmin sa ina mai yayi da shi akan rayuwar sa ya yi kare ta akan samartakar sa ya ta wuce masa akan ilm akan dukiyar sa ina ya samu a ina ya fatar to tambayar kenan da zai a gaban Allah haka dalika ma'aqil ibni yasar ya ruweto annabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya ce babu wani shugaba da za a bashi mulki akan wadanda suke karkashin sa sannan ya mutu yana ya mutu yana ha'intar su face Allah ya haramta masa shiga aljanna wannan hadisi shima ingantacce ne a cikin buhari da muslim sannan akwai hadisan abu dhar ya ce na ce ya rasulullah ka bani matsayi na mulki ka bani matsayi na shugabanci wato ka bani ka nada ni wani matsayi na al'umma ya ce sai annabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam yadda kika fada ta da hannunsa ya ce ya abu dhar kai mutun ne mai rauni ita kuma wannan shi kuma mulki amana ne kuma rana alqiyama zai zamanto dalilin wato kaskanci ne da nadama sai wanda ya dauki hakkin Allah ya cika nauyin da yake cikin sa kuma annabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya nuna barna wajibi ne a yake ta a cikin hadisai da dama daga ciki hadisi mashhuri na abu sa'id al-hudri duk wanda daga cikin ku da ya ga aiki na munkari to ya gyara shi da hannunsa in ba zai iya ba ya gyara shi da da harshen sa in ba zai iya ba ya gyara shi da zuciya ya ki shi a zuciyar sa wannan shine mafi raunin imani wannan hadisin shine abin da malamai suka wadansu marubuta na zamani suka dauka shine dalilin aikin whistle blowing wanda ake ta cace ku cece ku ce a kansa shine idan ka ga barna ana yi ka je ka kai ka je ka fada don a kama mai barnar to wannan wannan hadisin zai iya zamantowa asasi nasa to amma sauran ka'idodi na shari'a sun da baibaye shi me ka'idodi na shari'a shari'a ta hana aiki da zato kada ka je kana zato ka je kai aiki a kansa domin annabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya ce ku kiyayi zato kuma shari'a ta hana wato shiga burtu shiga burtu shine spine ka je ka yinka tajassusi akan mutane domin ka keta al'aurar su domin duk wanda ya bibi al'auran mutane akan abin da suke tsakanin su da Allah ba wanda ya sani to shi ma Allah zai bibi al'auran sa ya tona shi saboda haka idan aka kiyaye shi da wannan to sai ya zamanto yana da asali a cikin shari'a abu na hudu da abu na uku da yake kawo wannan da yake kayyade shi shine cewa ba wai daga ka ga mun kare za ka je ka za ka je ka kai kara ba a'a farko tuku naka hana wanda yake don maqsudin ba wai kawai ai maganin munkarin aikin ba shi kansa wanda yake munkarin kar a bashe ci gaba da halaka saboda haka ka hana shi shine wajibi a kanka farkon mataki kenan idan yake hanuwa to shine zaka dauki mataki na gaba to sannan kuma abu na karshe wanda annabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya fada ya wanda yake ba da asali ga wannan shi ma cewa dukkan tattaunawa da aka yi a sirce to amana ce sai a cikin abubuwa guda uku tattaunawa da aka yi aka yi shiri dan azbar da jini ko dan a keta alfarman mace 
ta fuskar haram ko dan a ci dukiya ba da haki ba to nan babu amfani babu aminci in an yi shirin wannan in ka tona a sidi babu lebi duk da wannan hadisin bai inganta ba amma rashin inganci nasa ba mai rauni bane kuma ya dace da ka'idodin shari'a sannan daga cikin hadisan da suke nuna cewa wajibi ne a tashi a yaƙin a yaƙi da barna akan kowa kuma wannan yake shine hadisin Nu'man ibn Bashir wanda annabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya ba da misalin a wato misalin wanda yake tsaye akan iyakar Allah yana hana asaba ma Allah kamar mutane ne da suka shiga cikin jirgin ruwa sai suka yi ƙuri'a wadansu suna sama wadansu suna kasa to idan na wato idan na kasan nan za su bukaci ruwa sai sun tattaka sun hausa ma sun ke tsallake su sannan su je su ebo ruwa sannan su sha to sai su wanda ga cikin su yace to wai me yasa muke wahal da kanmu muke wahal da yan uwanmu da suke sama mu huda rami mana kawai anan a kasan mu inda muke kaga ruwan mu kawai sai ya rinka zuwa kawai sai mu rinka kwasa ba sai mun hausa mu ba to annab sallallahu alaihi wasallam yace idan mutanen da ke cikin jirgin ruwan musamman na sama suka kyale su da abin da suke so su yi duk za su halaka idan ku suka kama hannu suka ce ku ba za ku yi ba ba za ku halakar da mu gaba ki dai ba duk sai su tsira to haka barna take idan ba a samu mutane sun tashi sun yake ta ba za ta hade al'umma baki daya wannan darasi ne muhimmi sannan kuma annab sallallahu alaihi wasallam a cikin wannan ma dai yace ka taimaki dan uwanka ko azalimi ne ko wanda ake zalinta suka ce ya rasulullah azalimi mun san wanda ake zalinta mun san inda za mu taimake shi azalimi fa yace ku hana shi zalinci saboda haka kaga wannan shi ma ya nuna asali na yaki da barna a sannan annab sallallahu alaihi wasallam yayi gargadi akan amfani da matsayi na amana na al'umma domin maslaha ta mutun kansa mashhuri shine hadisin ibn al-lutbiya wanda aka ambata wanda annab sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya tura shekar bazzaka zakka da ya dawo sai yace to ga naku ga kuma wannan kyauta aka ba ni sai annab sallallahu alaihi wasallam dan ganin muhimmancin abun bai kawai ce masa wannan ba daidai bane sai ya sa sai sai ya haukan minbari ya hudu ba akan wannan yace me zai sa me yake sawa mun san idan muka ba mu mutun amana aiki daga cikin aikin da Allah ya dora mana sai ya je ya dawo ya ce ga naku ga kuma kyauta da aka bani yace me yasa bai zauna a gidan uwarsa da ubansa ba ya gani za a kawo masa kyauta ko ba za a wanka kawo masa kyauta ba sannan ya fadi kalma da yake cewa to wallahi yace Allah na isar kada na zo na hada dayan kurana alkiyama yana dauke da wata akuya yana kira na yana ya muhammad ya muhammad ce na isar maka ko yana dauke da saniya tana kuka yana cewa ya muhammad ya muhammad ce na isar maka ko yana dauke da taguwa yana kira na ya muhammad ya muhammad ce na na isar maka ko yana dauke da zinari da azurfa ya kira ni yana cewa ya muhammad ya muhammad ce na isar maka yace to na isar don ku shaida to wannan ya nuna cewar wannan yana daga cikin gulul kana matsayi a baka kyauta kuma abun mamaki wato hatta tsarin mulkin najeriya a cikin shedul din sa na biyar na abin nan uh, code of public officers code of conduct na public officers a cikin shedul din sa yace dukkan wata kyauta da aka ba ma mai rike mai rike mukani na siyasa wanda suka fada da shugaban kasa da mataimakin sa da gwamna da mataimakin sa da komishinoni da directoci suka fade su duk da kuma duk wanda duk wadansu wanda majalisa za ta kara a cikin wannan list din duk suna ciki ba shi da haƙin ya karbo ta kyauta sai kyauta daga ɗan uwan sa ko dangin sa shi ma kuma na ɗan uwa ko dangi din nan a bisa al'ada kamar lokuta na al'ada amma duk wata kyauta da za a ba shi idan a wani bikini na gwamnati aka kawo masa kyauta to wannan kyautar zai ka wannan kyautar ta gwamnati shi shi aka ba ma da sunan sa aka ba kaga ba abin da suka abin da ba abin nan kaga abin da annabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya fada a cikin ibnul lutbiya shine suka zo suka dauko ya dace da abin da suka domin abin da annabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya zo da shi abu ne wanda yake ya dace da hikima da adalci watammat kalimatu rabbika sidqan wa adla ya dace da hikima da adalci to sannan a manzan allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yace duk wanda ga cikin ku da na ba shi wani mukami sannan ya boye abinda aka ce ya kawo ko da kwatan kwacin allura ne to wannan abinda yayi yayi ha'inci kuma rana al'iyama zai zo da shi wani mutum daga cikin ansar yana jin wannan maganar 
sai ya rasulullah ka bani aiki karbu kayan ka bana so yace me ya faru yace ai naji abin da kace ya rasulullah sai manzon allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yace na kara maimaitawa duk wani wanda muka dora shi akan wani aiki to yazo da duk abin da aka duk abin da aka ce ya kawo shi babba ko karami kuma duk abin da muka bashi daga cikin albashin sa ya karba abin da kuma ba a ce masa ya karba ba kada ya dauka wannan hadisin yana cikin imam yana cikin sahih muslim haka dalika manzon allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yace wato kyauta alheri abin nan kyauta ta alfarma da ake ma wato masuru aikin masuriki office a cikin al'umma yana daga cikin gulul hadaya al'umal gulul al'gulul shine abin da mutun ya boye a cikin ganima tun kafin araba to abin da aka ba mutun hadiya yana office aka bashi wannan hadiya to gulul ne innallahi ga manzan allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya fadi a a a a manzan allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya fadi wannan domin mun in kuka tuna abin da gulul yake kawowa wani sahabin annabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam da kibiya ta zo ta same shi yana daura dukin sa kibiya ta same shi bawon manzon allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya fadi ya mutu sahabai suna cewa hani'an yayi mutuwar shahada annabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam yace kalla yace taguwa wanda ya dauka ya boye a cikin kayan ganima kafin araba tana zabalbala tana tana tafar tana tafar fasa jikin sa ruce wuta tana balbala a jikin sa a cikin kabarin sa a lokaci to wannan shine ma'anar gulu manzon allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yace a cikin hadisun burai da bin al-husayn idan muka ba mu mutum aiki muka kuma bashi dukiya akan wannan aikin a matsayin wato albashin sa to duk wani abu wanda ya dauka ba shi ba wannan gulul ne to sai kuma a tsananin narko da yazo daga annabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam akan cin hanci wanda shi ma hanya ce ta musulunci da aka yaki da barna manzon allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yace la'anallahu rashi wal murtashi allah ya tsine ma me bayar da cin hanci da wanda yake karba wannan ya sannan na karshe abin da zai maganin wato barna a wajen masu hukunci alƙalai domin dai daga cikin da muka yi maganar cewar akwai tsarika da musulunci yazo da shi na maganin barna mun yi maganar shari'a to babban abu akan ingancin shari'a shine samun wato zartar da ita ma'aikata shari'a wadanda suke masu masu adalci shi yasa annabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya fadi al wato ya fadi cewar wato alƙalai guda uku ne biyu suna wuta ɗaya yana aljanna saboda idan suka inganta to abin da zai inganta rayuwar al'umma kenan to akan su manzon allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya fadi cewar akwai alƙalai guda uku biyu suna cikin wuta ɗaya yana cikin aljanna alƙali da alƙali da yi hukunci bisa san rai to zai shiga wuta alƙali da yi hukunci ba da ilimi ba dan wuta ne alƙalin da ya san gaskiya ya tsaya tare da ita a cikin hukuncin sa dan aljanna ne sanan anas ibn malik yace manzon allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya ambaci manya manyan zinubai sai yace shirka da allah da kashe mutum ba da haki ba da kuma saba ma iyaye sannan yace bana ga muku abin da daga cikin manya manyan zinubai ba yace shine shaida kariya wannan ta da alaka da alƙalanci akan haka ne annabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya hana a nema alfarma akan abin da ya danganci alƙalanci lokacin da yar mahzumiya da tayi sata aka zo za a yanke mata hannu sai quraish al'amarun ta ya dame su ya tsananta a gare su saboda sharifi ya ce tana da tana da gir tana da kima suka ce a samu usama dan lelan manzon allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya je nema alfarma manzon allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya ce kana neman kai nema alfarma a wajen zartar da haddi daga cikin haddin allah sannan ya ce wallahi da fatima ce tai sata da na yanke hannunta 
al'umar da suka gabace ku idan mutun sharifi yayi sata a cikin su sai su kyale shi idan kuma fakiri na kasa yayi sata sai su zartar da haddi a kansa to wannan ya nuna a ka'idar addinin musulunci wajen tsare wato aikin shari'a da muhimmancin sa wajen yaki da barna a kasa yanzu a yanzu yanci duk abin da muke samu na mushkiloli din a yanci duk tarnakin daga wajen sha'anin shari'a ne in ba inganta shi ba kuma babu abin da zai inganta shi illa tarbiyar addini babu abin da zai inganta shi illa tarbiyar addini da karantarwar sa a ƙarshe wannan musulunci wannan takaddar abin da na nuna mana shine nuna mana yanda musulunci yake ya kunshi rayuwa baki daya da kuma kan cewa maslaha a cikin addinin musulunci wato shine manufar manufar addinin musulunci ya kawo maslaha ya yawaita to ita kuma maslahan nan wato tana da matakai matakai duk da yake ban samu dama bayanin su ba abin da kuma addinin musulunci ya zo da shi ya kawar shine barna ita kuma barnan nan daga cikin jinsin barna shine irin ita wannan barna ta corruption da muka yi magana akai addinin musulunci ya zo ya kawar da ita ya rage ta a daga abubuwan da muka karanta da musalai musamman hadisan manzon Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam da kuma tsare tsare wanda tarihin musulunci ya tabbatar mun ga yanda addinin musulunci yake yaki da barna da mabarnata dan haka a bayyane yake kan cewar wato wannan ka'ida da muka fada ta manufar addinin musulunci haka take kuma maqsudi shine musulmi da kuma musamman malamai da jagororin addini saboda sun kasance saboda matsayin su na cewa su ne magadan annabawa za su tashi da gaske haikan domin yaki da barna a cikin al'umma kuma yadda manzon Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam da sauran annabawa suka yi za su yi amfani da dukkan hanyoyi da suke da shi na isa ga mutane da kuma kafa tsarin ruka da ba da gudumawa da hada karfi akan ayyukan nagarta da ayyukan tsoron Allah su ga sun cewa sun yaki wannan mummunan cuta wadda take tana ita ce take addabar mu a cikin wannan al'umma ta mu muna roko albarkar wannan wata Allah madaukakin sarki ya sa mu ga wato ingantaccen gyara a cikin al'umma mu kuma abinda muka fada daidai Allah ya karba Allah ya karba abinda kuma nayi kuskure akai Allah ya yafe mu wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahu akbar Well, we As I, did, as I said earlier before the presentation of the paper, I said the guest lecturer will do justice to this paper. But before we move on, let me welcome the Executive Governor of Adamawa State, His Excellency Mohammed Umar Jibrila Bindu, who came in when the guest lecturer is delivering this paper. You are welcome, Your Excellency. Let me also welcome the National President of NURTW and the Vice President International Transport Federation and also the African President of International Transport Federation, Nimaka Mangusau, Magajarapim, Maru and Tafidan Taipei, Alaji Nassim Yasin. Let me also welcome Alaji Abdullahi Musa Bello, the GM NTA Duse, Shitu Lawal from Tua, the Director of Marketing NTA, Umar Abubakar Dembo. We have had the paper on the Islamic perspective on corruption. And what I deduce, I deduce three categories, you know, that I've never known before, but I believe most of us have written various aspects of corruption to which Islam has already identified that and also forbid all Muslim Ummah from committing any act of corruption. He talked about social corruption, and we have a new aspect of corruption, which is the environmental corruption 
the destruction of the ecosystem and also the pollution or the depletion of the ozone layer and its corruption. So therefore, if somebody is talking about corruption, that is an environmental corruption. I shake Dr. Bashir Aliu Umar, Bayer University Kano and Chief Imam of Al Furqan Jumad Mosque. We thank you for this well researched and well thought uh, paper on Islamic uh, perspective on corruption. This is the 13th series of Anwar Ramadan lecture by NTA, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria, and it's been transmitted live by two giant African network, one of radio that is NTA, and one is Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN. And also, the Voice of Nigeria is streaming live on www.vom.gov.ng, getting the feed from the NTA. To do a kind of discussion on this paper for only 10, 10 minutes is a lecturer from Ahmad Bele University, Zaria, Dr. Yahya Mujahid, who will do uh, uh, justice to this paper also by sticking to time. But there is a paper going around that you should, in, you should now, uh, you should indicate your uh, email address uh, so that this paper presented here today will be sent, you know, to you. But in case if you didn't see the paper, you can also uh, please get this email address and request for this paper delivered here. The email address is NTA FRCN VOM ARL in one word at gmail.com. Let me repeat NTA FRCN VOM ARL at gmail.com. Dr. Yahya Mujahid, you have 10 minutes to do a kind of uh, discussion or to discuss this paper delivered by Dr. Sheikh Bashir uh, Ali Umar. Thank you. Wa sallallahu wa sallim. Ala malla nabiya ba'dahu Muhammad nabiyullah wa rasuluh. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabih. Wa man salaka sabilahum bi khayri suluki la yumiddin. Wabad assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Permit me to stand on the existing protocol to discuss this issue of uh, fighting corruption in Islamic perspective. My own presentation is to delineate what you have listened for over an hour. Therefore, I'm going to make it on a point for everyone to be able to comprehend the approach of Islam in fighting corruption. And I said, in Islamic perspective, to fight corruption, you must be able to identify three essentials. One, you must be able to define the causes. Two, you must be able to know the nature of the corruption. And three, you should be able to define the qualities of those to fight the corruption. In the submission of the paper, as understood by myself, to make it easy for comprehension, I said the causes can only be divided, majorly be divided into two. One of these quest, I mean, causes has to do with the instigation of shaitan. And when you look at it, 
carefully all the discussion he submitted are within that uh, point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ash-shaytan wa'idukum al-fakra wa ya'amurukum bil-fahsha. He threatens you with poverty and he commands you to immorals. So once this is quite understood, we will be able to fight this corruption properly. The other aspect of the causes, which I said they are majorly be divided into two, are what we call the instinct. The instinct. These are the natural instinct how man is created. The religion Allah created man with them, but he doesn't want you to remain with them. That is why you are a Muslim. Stinginess, impatient, and uh, greediness, these are the most dangerous aspects that instigate man to corruption. And Allah makes the solution in the Quran by saying, Inna insana khulika halua. Iza masahu sharru jazua. Wa iza masahu al khayru manua. These are instincts in man that leads man to corruption. Unless and until man is able to fight those aspects and then. It is only then he is able to stand not being a corrupt person. And uh, when we look at the nature of corruption, the entire nature of corruption we have is pollution of faith and character. And when you go by the causes, plus the causes, you understand. The entire faith has been affected. You see people, people are appearing to be Muslims, are bearing names of Islam, but in reality they are not. Because the faith has been corrupted, has been polluted. This aspect, I said, is the nature of the corruption that is prevailing in our society today. I will come to understand this very well. Another aspect of the nature is to collect the entire aspect is under the crime. And this crime has to do either crime on life or crime on wealth. How people are being eliminated, unjust. How people can take away the entire treasury and then claim the ownership of it. These two aspects as nature, I said, is the prevailing situation in our society. Then the qualities of those to fight the corruption. Three issues must be there. Whether a leader, per se, a head of state, a governor, a, I mean, chairman, local government, whatever status he is holding, whether the the judge, as mentioned by the presenter, they must be able to possess the three qualities. Number one, they must be able to possess sound faith. The faith should not be a corrupt faith because one who does not possess a good faith cannot fight another aspect of corruption. And I have said, the corruption is pollution of mind, of the of it. A polluted person, one who believes in soothsayer, sorcery, witchcraft, cannot be able to fight corruption. That cannot be able to fight corruption, I said it. Because he has not possessed the quality that could lead him to fight the order of corruption. A simple arithmetic, zero plus zero equals to zero. Zero times zero is equal to zero. When you take the second, the, the, issue, the, the, third, the second quality, 
should be trustworthy. And the third quality should have the ability and strength and as well as he can reason. He can reason in fighting the corruption. When you go back to the fourth quality, as I mentioned here, possession of the sound feet, then I said that also should be divided into two. The first aspect, as I mentioned, should be free from shit and should have sound, I mean, should have a consciousness of Allah at all times. This is a person that can fight corruption. Consciousness and ability lead him to understand the actual position of every person under him. Today, we are in the midst of corruption. Corruption has become part of us. As mentioned by the presenter, everywhere you see corruption. I don't say you see corruption in religion, corruption in at homes, corruption is everywhere. But sometimes, when you look at carefully, you look issues carefully, you find that if leadership should not understand the real causes of those corruptions, hardly we can be able to fight the corruption. Let me give you an example. Hindu, wife of Abu Sufyan, she came to Rasul and, told, and, and, and I mean, uh, complained to Rasul that my husband, Abu Sufyan, is stingy. He doesn't give us wealth. He doesn't give us enough myself and my children. And I used to take from his wealth unknowingly. Rasul now said, Go ahead, take the wealth, feed yourself and your family according to your needs. So what is the meaning of this? A group of workers were reported to have been taken to Umar bin Khattab by their master that they have stolen the, the wealth. And Umar said to them, when he inquired, why did you steal from the wealth of your master. And then they were able to tell Umar the salary they received, which is not enough to cater for their needs. And Umar said, you are the Zalim, not they. In a nutshell, a corruption cannot be properly dealt with when people are staffed. Who is to arrest the corrupt person? The staffed should arrest a corrupt person? Impossible. Let us call the spade a spade. Today we receive the minimum salary of 18,000 naira. A bag of rice is 16,000 naira. How much money is he spending from that minimum salary and as well as reserve for other things? Indeed, you invite for corruption. Corruption cannot be dealt with unless you identify the causes very well and go by the solutions. And that solution, when we say consciousness of Allah is someone who feels the presence of Allah wherever he is. He doesn't have any selfish interests. He doesn't segregate. He believes to deal with all. And that is what the presenter mentioned. Never belongs to your party. No belongs to your group. No belongs to any class. But they be, should be dealt in, at equal footing. And this is what Islam says. My brothers and sisters, I would like to say, because of the minute given to me, the issue of this corruption today is 
a serious issue that we must to address the issue. All the crimes you are seeing being committed are as a result of one disease or the other. If you cannot be able to find the disease and provide a good curing, definitely it will continue itching the human being. It will continue itching the entire society and hardly you see no one that is not corrupt. He mentioned the wife is corrupt in relation to her husband. The husband must be also corrupt in relation to others. And so also, this is how everyone moves about. So I was asked also to change to Hausa language so that I can stop on this issue now. What I'm saying, Abu Daniki Chewa, Agurguje Kameda Akachi, in Ancheza Ayagi, the corruption, co barana, co facade, the Kalamadin, Baoshi, Eche barana, Baturi, Eche corruption, Balare, Eche facade, do Inkata Tarasu, Inza Ayagi, the Su Amusilinchi, do Lene, say, and Kale Abu Abuda Uku, Nadaya, Mene, Yahad Dasashi, Nabiu. Say an san menene irin yanayin corruption din sannan na uku a nemi wane ne wai zai yaki da corruption din na daya na ce idan ka kalli me ke haddasa corruption in ka raba a gida a gida a musulunci gida biyu ne sauran rabar rabar za su go ciki ne kawai na daya ko dai tun zirawan shedan kamar da Allah ya ce da mu a shaitanu ya'idukum al-faqra wa ya'murukum bil-fahsha Koko nabiyu chiwa rowa the chiwa baba kere the kuma rashin hauri shine Allah ya tattara su yace inna al-insana khuliqa halua idha massahu sharru jazua wa idha massahu al-khayru manua wadannan abubuwa ne da aka halitta a jikin kowane dan adam amma Allah ba ya so ka zauna tare da su kau da su shine mai da kai mai da kanka musulmi to yayin da mutane ba su yaki wannan ba akwai matsala san na ce a gurguje wai wane ne zai iya yaki da wannan corruption din sai yana da wayansu suffofi masu girma guda uku sun fa ta farko sai ya mallaki imani gangariya na ce a karkashin wannan suffar sai ya zan bai imani da bokaye ba bai imani da matsafa ba bai tare da matsafa bai aikin shirka ko ce sai na sifa ta biyu a karkashin wannan guda sai ya zama mai jin Allah a ko ina yake sai na sifa karkashi ta biyu sai ya zama mai rukun amana sifa ta uku sai ya zama mai iya iya zartar da abin da yake gani na hukunci kuma tare da natsuwa na hankali da fahimta wannan yanayi shi sa na ce idan ka kalli corruption a cikin nawo duniyar mu ta yau gewayen mu na Nigeria dole ne a fahimci me ya haddasa corruption abubuwa daban-daban sai na bada magana Hindu Hindu ta zo jan annabi alai salatu wassalam tana mishi kuka ta ce ya rasulullahi miji na abu sufyan ba ya bana abin da zan ci da ni da ya'ya na in koshi amma ina dan sata daga dukiyar sa in yi sai ka ji annabi ce da na wancan sata ma sai ce ci gaba da dauka ki ci yadda kanki da iyalinki ashe idan baka bayar ba mai jin yunwa ba zai kamo wani mai jin yunwan ba wanda yake jin yunwa ka ce je ka kamo bai da ko kwabo a aljihu je ka kamo wani ya saci miliyan 10 to me ya hana in ya bashi dan miliyan 1 ya ce da Allah ba ta to saboda haka na ce idan ku nau'in corruption din mu a yau corruption ne da ya taba aqida ya taba zuciyar mutane yau mutane ne kake ganin sa sunan musulunci kam amma in ka bincika sai ka ga musulunci babu domin matsafa da tsafi da me yadda suna yin shi to idan ku mutane irin nature irin yanayin corruption din su kenan babu Allah ciki suna iya tsafi suna iya komai to ashe ba wani matsafin ba zai koru wani matsafin ba 
sai an samu aqida salima aqida tsayayya ita ce za ta iya yaki da wannan ka koma tarihin manzon Allah ka koma tarihin sabai da sauran su bari tsaya na kamar da kace assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh thank you very much dr yahya majid from ahmad bella university azaria um please apart from requesting by email for the paper presented uh, earlier on you can also download all the previous series of anwar ramadan lecture by simply go to youtube and just type nta uh, sorry nta frcn von annual ramadan lecture you now subscribe and you will download all the lecture series the 12 lecture series and i believe in the next couple of days you will have the lecture of today um before we move on and i think there are some questions because it's going to be some little question and answer series it will not take much time uh, some people have written questions which uh, the sheikh will try to answer then we now take a few remarks then we round up the program for today uh, doctor there are few questions here please you can send in your questions so that uh, we will ask you know the uh, guest lecturer so that he can uh, answer them briefly uh, the first one he says assalamu alaikum what does islam says about judging a case of corruption especially the cases of corruption in nigeria that is uh, taking a long time um, the second question is uh, you have talked about uh, you know the severity of uh, taking bribe and also uh, the type of leadership we have uh, in nigeria what is the repercussion of uh, this kind of uh, fundraising you know by politicians Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala uh, He said regarding the cases of corruption in Nigeria that is taking a long time Well you know the position of Islam on adjudication of, over every case is Al-bayyinatu ala al-mudda'i wal yaminu ala man ankar That the, uh, the prostitution is the one that has the onus of providing the witnesses and then the defendant uh, uh, he is the one that will be asked to swear which means that once a case has been foolproof with evidences then there should not be delay in justice because any delay in justice brings about a lot of corruption in itself so uh, if indeed we are to follow the teachings of Islam, uh, the, 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 the unnecessary uh, delays or the interference of factors that are outside the real uh, legality and the legal process, they are all things that are not acceptable under the Sharia. Uh, regarding this question, I don't know whether to answer it in Hausa or in English. Uh, it is written in Hausa wato akan haramcin karbar kyauta ga shugaba bisa tsarin kundin mulkin Nigeria ato ani bai kamata a tambaye ni bisa tsarin kundin mulkin Nigeria misali kawai na kawo shi a bisa shari'a shugaba ba zai karbi kyauta ba akan kyautar da aka bashi yana kan mulki saboda yana mulkin sa amma dan gane da abin da ya fada na tsarin neman kudaden campaign fundraising na campaign to uh, shi wannan ya wannan idan maslaha tunda ai ita, ita kanta dokar tsarin dokar ainihi ta fadi ka'idodin da ake bi 
wajen tara kudin campaign to wannan abu ne wanda yake na maslaha da kuma tsare mutunci idan aka yi shi bisa abunda idan aka fitar da tsari wanda aka yi ganin kanta shine na adalci doka kuma ta yadda da shi shine tsarin tara kudin campaign idan mutun ya bi wannan to kaga wannan ya tsira yana da hujja amma in bai bi wannan ba abinda ya janyo masa na cin mutunci da da sabawa wannan kuma doka ce ta daure shi a zai zamanto kan cewar ba shi da hujja a nan wajen wannan shine kadai abinda zan iya fada akan wannan wallahu ta'ala well there are two questions also madam on the this uh, one is about gift and the other one is on whistle blower uh, the one this one it says islam allows a leader to give gifts what is the position of islam on gifts given to delegates that attended a meeting in a state by his excellency the executive governor whether cash or materials then this one is uh, salam alaikum uh, as i light on whistle blower so uh, what will be the modification okay. islamically okay okay yeah uh, a ruler is allowed to give gifts it is true uh, and that is why uh, the gift that is given for the for the benefit of society for the good of society uh, it is permissible to accept gifts uh, so long as they are gifts that are coming from the public treasury and the the leader is empowered by law and by morality to give that gift uh, but the moment a gift is not a gift but is rather is rather somebody by gaining his religion for that then it, uh, uh, that becomes a bribery there is a thin line between gift and bribery and uh, it is it is it is imperative on the muslim to always make the distinction between the two uh, whatever is given for personal benefit and you know that it is given for compromise it is given not uh, for the interest it is given not for the inter for public interest and for the interest of good then is somebody it is something which somebody should av must avoid uh, when he says delegates i don't understand is he talking about delegates to for primary elections or what kind of delegates if it is delegates for primary election we know what it is we don't need to answer uh, we don't need to even ask ourselves i mean this is just a uh, sell and purchase buying and selling he is selling some he is giving the money to the delegates in order to get their votes in order to get their votes and uh, this is clearly a case of misappropriation of public uh, misuse of public funds and the people who take also they are buying what they are not supposed to sell because the votes are not for sale so if you sell what you are not supposed to sell and you consume that money you are eating haram because it becomes akli amwal in nasi bil batil especially in, when the money comes from the public treasury which it makes it even worse regarding whistle blowing and the modifications for it under islam i mentioned the modifi i mentioned the the restrictions i said there are restrictions which is whistle blowing must not be based on suspicion and whistle blowing must not lead to spying and whistle blowing must not preclude first giving good counsel to the one who is the uh, who is the perpetrator before doing the whistle blowing you should give good counsel to the person who is doing it and uh, uh, with these restrictions it can fall under uh, prevention of al munkar uh, and first and foremost before and before everything else it is something which one should do feasibilillah and that is why the issue of the issue of jaala the issue of jaala which is the practice that is done that whoever reports a case of whistle blowing he will get a monetary reward once we say that the basis is nahyu anil munkar it makes it an act of ibadah and if it is an act of ibadah you are not entitled to collect something for it because an act of ibadah can only be feasibilillah so jaala cannot be done for uh, something that is except for something that is purely commercial uh, with the exception of uh, with the exception of like the teaching the recitation of the quran it is ibadah but it is also an effort 
So you are charging something for your effort. So it boils down to something that translates into being commercial. But the act of whistleblowing itself, uh, it is a public duty. It is a duty for the community which you are supposed to do. So the question of monetary reward for it may not be uh, may not be in the spirit of the Islam uh, may not be in the spirit of Islam, but then uh, by the uh, by the leeway that has been given to the wali al amr the leader, he's been given a lot of leeway in doing things that are for the public benefit. If it means that people uh, that are expected to come and do are not doing because they are not doing it feasibly and there has to be a monetary reward in that spirit something like that can be done just like the hulafa they gave monetary reward for people who were committing books of knowledge to writing for instance the hulafa they used to do that they will say the one who compiles such and such number of books shall be given such and such a monetary reward this is an act of piety but they prescribe because of maslaha, because of, uh, of, 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 of common good, they prescribe something like that. So this could be permissible under such circumstances. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. And this is just my opinion. And I think this is the only question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Um, I think, you know, uh, there are some questions from the gallery where our sisters are sitting down. Uh, since uh, uh, a Sheikh, Dr. Ahmed Gumi, is going to speak for two minutes, I think let me just lump this, some of the questions from our Muslim sisters so that Malam will talk for only three minutes, answer them as his remarks. Um, somebody said, Malam, Malam, I think you should have a chance to get 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 a chance to Giving a lecturer something for appreciating his lecture, is it corruption? I want to know more. Um, my question is uh, for the AFCC representative. And I think, you know, he just presented, uh, you know, a kind of um, brief remarks on behalf of his chairman. Since the chairman is not here, we will not allow him, you know, to answer this question. We just... Uh, uh, please limit ourselves to the paper presented. I thank you very much. I check Dr. Ahmad Mohamed Gumi. Uh, <clears throat> First, praise to Allah, glory to Him, who has brought us together in this very important gathering where we listen to a very important lecture. My felicitation to the high table and you the listeners. Corruption. Corruption in what is one of the most, most difficult things to fight. Because the same corruption can come as fighting corruption and you will be deceived. Let me tell you an example. Uthman bin Affan, one of the pious companions of the Prophet of the Prophet وسلم, was killed. Among the reasons why he was killed is that he is corrupt. Sadrona of Sokoto here in Kaduna, a man who everybody can testify, when he died, he has only 10 pounds in his account. Among the reasons Major Nzebu narrated for his death was that he was corrupt. Shou Shagari in the Second Republic. He doesn't have a plot or a house in Abuja or Kaduna or nowhere except a house in Sokoto. But he was removed among the reason he was corrupt. Corruption can turn around and claim to you is fighting corruption when in the real sense it's not fighting corruption, that is corruption. This is what we have to take care of. But at the same time, we have to hail the effort of the present government in fighting corruption. How can we hail it? By telling it the truth so that it corrects its way. Help your brother. How can we help this government? One, corruption is going to die out naturally as more people become educated. Americans are no more or less corrupt than us. It's the only that the system will not allow you to corrupt, to, 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 to steal. So 
built up the system, corruption will die away. The problem with people is the spiritual corruption, not the material corruption. The spiritual corruption. The Prophet ﷺ said, by the end of time, money will be so abundant, everybody will have money. Nobody will be complaining of money. So the question of material corruption is going to die. But what is coming to increase the spiritual corruption? There will be promiscuity. There will be all kind of sins all around. Nobody's talking about. And if you look at the war on corruption, is targeted at only material corruption. No. Let's divert it too to spiritual corruption. Let's put effort in spiritual corruption. That's where the efforts of ulama came. So the question, what are ulamas doing? Ulamas are fighting corruption even before the war on corruption started because they are trying to correct the spiritual corruption. And may Allah help the ulamas in fighting it. Then secondly, what is important, my advice to the government, corruption is so important in our life that it should never be a political slogan. You should never get power because of corruption. Because if you use it as a political placard, you are going to woefully fail. Why? Your opponent is looking at you. Because whatever you accuse your opponents of, you the same, have the same disease. So you cannot get their cooperation. So let's put the war on corruption at the background by building institutions. We don't want when somebody declares he wants to be a president of Nigeria, you, you FCC people will start now asking that he's corrupt. No, don't do that. Don't use it as a political weapon. Bring the op opposition, bring them. Bring everybody together, the Muslims and the Christians, the poor and the rich, please, let's salvage this nation. We can only salvage it by being truthful to ourselves and minimizing this corruption. With this sense of brotherhood, we can overcome corruption. This is my advice to the government. So, fight of, uh, against corruption is two ways. Spiritual and then calling for brotherhood. I cannot imagine, I cannot imagine if a politician will call his opponent and say, come please, the nation is having a big problem. Please, be part of us. Be part of our government. We are definitely We'll get cooperation. But when it is used for other things, then this is what we end up. But I still pray that we come together, we unite as a nation, and also try to uproot the scourge of this uh, corruption. Nobody in Nigeria or anywhere else need to be told about the ills of corruption. The problem is how we tackle it, how we kill it. I will just give you a simple story. A rat. Rat is one of the most corrupt animals. Sorry, I have a rat in my kitchen. <laughs> One of my, the wife, my wife, which uh, the rat has infested her kitchen, is too much afraid of rats. So I said, look, let's put some anti-rat medicine, poison. She said, no, 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 no. When will it, is, she wants it quickly. So I said, the best thing, let's take out the cooker, because we found that they go into the cooker too and hide. We took out the cooker outside, dismantled the cooker. One of the rats, one, came out. The, the, my boys that were helping me to dismantle the cooker, we are busy with the screwdriver. I was holding a stick. I am the one who saw the rat coming out. So I followed the rat. In trying to beat it, I fell down and nearly broke my hand. You see, physically. We, we put up the uh, cooker together, put it in the kitchen again. There were some few left in the cooker yet. So we bought rat poison. And I can declare to you, alhamdulillah, today that my kitchen is free of rats. <laughs> subtly, subtly you can do it. But when you want to do it physically, catch this man, imprison this man, you cannot succeed. 
You need the cooperation of everybody and silently and subtly, inshallah, we will overcome it. Thank you very much. Atakbir. Well, you can see the various methods of uh, fighting corruption, according to Sheikh Dr. Ahmed Mahmoud Gumi. Um, we would like to move on and have uh, remarks for two minutes by the representative of the Director General of Voice of Nigeria, Mr. Osi Osita Okechuku, been represented by the Deputy Director of Programs, Voice of Nigeria, Malan Usman Tongo. Then thereafter, we have the vote of thanks by the Director General, FRCN, Dr. Mansour Liman, the representative of uh, Director General, Voice of Nigeria. Please, you have two minutes, please, for this remark. For want of time, I will stand on all the existing protocol as was established. On behalf of the Director General of Voice of Nigeria, Ms. Osita Okechuku, he brought best greetings and tradition of Islam by saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. He asked for apologies because he wanted to physically be part of this event but because of official exigencies which happened in his home state of Inugu. He sought for apologies, he will not be here, he asked me to represent him, and he made this remark as follows. After saying assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu, he want to welcome everybody to this annual Ramadan lecture jointly organized by Voice of Nigeria, NTA, and Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria. This is done in realization of the various mandates of this organization of not only informing, educating, and entertaining the public, but also to set agenda for public discourse. And we can see the kind of response this topic has generated. The choice of this year's topic, Fighting Corruption, the Islamic Perspective, is apt and timely as the government of President Muhammad Buhari has not only made it one of the cardinal programs of his change mantra, but is surely winning the war against corruption. There is no gain saying that corruption is the bane of Nigeria's development and progress, but the lack of political will to fight it and free resources for development and progress is more worrisome. Therefore, we thank the President or summoning the political will and uncommon courage to fight this canker war. In addition, for Mr. President and his government to successfully prosecute and conclusively win the war against corruption, it needs, as a matter of fact, the buy-in of all Nigerians. And this is what has been highlighted by the various speakers, back to back by the two doctors and the erudite Islamic scholars, all of us, as Nigerians, we should buy in the, in the anti-corruption fight for it to succeed because the government and the president cannot do it alone. Also, he thanked the organizers of this lecture for the choice of this topic as he urged Muslim faithfuls to go back to the Quran, which has been attested by the speaker, to bring to bear all Islamic verses that explicitly, explicitly condemns corruption. He also urged those present and have listened attentively to this lecture to internalize it, go back, share this information with their loved ones, friends, neighbors, colleagues, so that at the end, together, we will support Mr. President and fight this cankerworm of corruption in Nigeria. While commending the organizers of this lecture for their doggedness in continuing this series, which is the 13th in the series, he also wished to urge the organizers to become more innovative and creative. And he meant 
creative and innovating for sources for funding for this lecture because organizing this lecture is very capital intensive and for them to rely on the parent organization which is NTA and Voice of Nigeria and Federal Radio Co Corporation of Nigeria to fund this lecture will not be sustainable because these organizations get their funding from government which is dwindling and is erratic. So therefore he advised that they look for other sources of funding to sustain this lecture. As the event continued to become bigger and better, and we had a very robust and successful devolution, he wished to ask for God mercies for all of us as we travel to our various destinations. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Indeed, as highlighted by the Director General Voice of Nigeria, organizing Ramadan lecture series of this nature by this trial of uh, media organization is indeed capital intensive. And that is why that we need to have uh, a kind of uh, support uh, to these organizations to continue to discharge this responsibility uh, diligently. Let me use this period to mention that whatever you see in form of booklets or transcription of lectures or printing a booklet of lectures and a, a DVD has been produced and distributed to people free of charge apart from the airtime by NTA and we know how it is <laughs> an airtime it costs an hour, not less than six million an hour. So for more than two hours, we have been standing here. So also FRCN, apart from that airtime, they also give donations. Uh, for NTA is one million naira. For FRCN, 500,000 naira. The chairman, Ipman, he's here, Alajibala Usman, I'm shot. He gave 100,000. Former Governor of Kaduna State, Ahmed Makarfi, 50,000 Naira. Uh, former Chief Justice of Nigeria, Mahmoud, 50,000 Naira. And a pledge by Voice of Nigeria of 1 million Naira. Our place is open so that, you know, by next year, we'll be able to have funds. We'll not wait for these organizations so that we have this uh, lecture series continue. We thank the initiator of this lecture series. She is right there, Mujahid. Okay, Vaughan has given 500,000 naira, sorry, not a pledge. Um, we want to thank Mujahid Haji and Mariam Viewer for initiating this lecture series, uh, which is the uh, 13th this year. Uh, let me ask and also welcome to the podium the Director General of Federal Radio Corporations of Nigeria, FRCN, Dr. Mansour Liman, to give us a vote of thanks. Doctor. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مهتد ومن يذل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وهده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله السلام عليكم uh, My task is a very simple task actually is just to say thank you to everyone that uh, contributed to the success of this uh, lecture. Mr. Chairman, I would want to use this opportunity especially to thank the guest lecturer, Dr. Bashir Ali Umar, for an excellent lecture on a topic that is very tropical in Nigeria today. The discussant also has added 
more perspective into what the guest lecturer gave us today. I pray to Allah to count this as sadaqat al jariah to all of them for educating us. Thank you very much. We pray to Allah to reward you immensely for that and reward you with Jannah and Firdaus. And I wish all of you a safe journey back home. I'm not going to take a long time, I mean, a lot of time uh, thanking individuals because I know here we have ulamas, including the guest lecturer, that have got a regular tafsir that is going on during the Ramadan period. And I'm sure if I'm not mistaken, I think our guest lecturer is going back to Kano uh, for his own uh, tafsir this evening. So I'm going to spare, I mean, I'm going to use uh, uh, a vote of thanks for everyone that is here. We really appreciate your presence and uh, your support. Uh, I want to especially thank the governor of uh, Kasina State uh, for sending a representative here and then the former executive governor of Kaduna State for being here in person. Uh, I want to also thank the chairman of the occasion, the Emir of Dutse, represented here by the district head of Kiawa, Alaja Adamu Kiawa, for coming in here. I also want to thank the Emir of Zazo, represented here by the Sarikim Father of Zazo. Thank you very much for all your support. Uh, lastly, but not the least, I want to use this opportunity to thank my chairman, the chairman of the board of directors of FRCN, for also taking the time to come here, and not just the time, but also agreeing to actually do, uh, a, a, I mean, a, a message, a goodwill message here for all of us. Uh, lastly, I want to thank everyone, especially the organizers of the lecture, the 10th lecture, for making it uh, a very good lecture and choosing a very good topic for all of us. I do hope we'll all, we all benefited from uh, what we had here and will put into practice what we learned. So I pray to Allah to take us back home safely and we pray to Allah to reward us, especially this month of Ramadan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, the Director General FRCN. On behalf of the crew of MTA, but here at Lumana Center, Ungwarimi Kaduna, and that of FRCN, our colleagues from Abuja and other parts of the country, distinguished participants, we thank you very much for attending this year's series. But I would like to end by announcing an unspecified amount of donation by Katsina State Government, which will be sent directly into the account of NTA, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria annual Ramadan series. We thank the Katsina State Government for this unspecified amount of donation. And I believe FCC is here. We don't want to mention any money that has to do with that. <laughs> um, on behalf of the organizing committee, chaired by Malam Musa Auna, and all the members of the organizing committee, our chairman, the Dammasan Induse, the Emir of Duse, represented by Dammasan Induse, the district head of Kiawa, Alaji Adamu Ali Kiawa, one of our veteran broadcasters. I am Zubair Abdrab Idris, the Dammasani of Birnungwari, saying goodbye, wassalamu alaikum, till next year, if Allah spares our life, inshallah. Um, it's another history made by the trio of NTA, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, Voice of Nigeria, for the successful organization of the annual Ramadan lecture. This is the 13th edition, and each edition remains an improvement compared to the previous. There is no doubt that many of those who attended this year's lecture series will believe in the venue, well-educated, the topic of discussion. 
which has become a nagging problem and very prevalent, make meaningful contribution to the success of the fight against corruption. And on behalf of the crew here at Lumana Hall, Jerry Kaduna, I also thank you for watching. Goodbye.